Lesson 6.10, more than one linear relation. We're not going to learn anything new about linear relations except that we're going to explore what it means to have two lines be on the same graph or three lines be on the same graph. So this is just a little situation. This is about babysitting. Nadia and Lisa are comparing their weekly earnings from babysitting. The following graph shows their earnings compared to the number of hours they worked in the week. So Lisa says, if we both work less than five hours or more than 15 hours, I earn more than you do. So what we need to do is look at the graph and figure out which, which line is Lisa and which one is Nadia. So I need to know, is the dotted line Lisa or is the solid line Lisa? Okay, line A or line B. So what Lisa said, if we work less than five hours, I earn more than you do. So when you look at five hours down here, if she makes, if she works less than five hours, I earn more than you do. So this actually tells us a lot. When we look at these two lines, here's a solid line up here and a dotted line down below. I want you to notice which one is higher. The amount earned up the side is actually how much money they're making. And so the line that is higher is somebody that's going to make more. So the solid line must be Lisa. So what we need to do first, our first part of this, is to note that this must be Lisa and that the dotted line must be Nadia. So in this section right there, Lisa makes more and Nadia makes less because her line is lower. The next part of this Describe what the graph shows about how each girl is paid for her week of work. So these girls are babysitting and they are charging in very different ways. If we look at Lisa first, there is a solid line that comes across from 30 and it goes straight across to there, right up to 10 and that's 10 hours. So up to 10 hours, Lisa makes $30. So it doesn't really matter. This is kind of an odd way to charge for babysitting, but I guess Lisa tells the family that if you need me for one hour or four hours or eight hours in that week, I'll just charge you $30 no matter what. And then from there on, Lisa charges a different amount per hour. So if we describe Lisa, she makes $30 for the first 10 hours. After that, we actually have to look at her line and try and figure out how much she's paid per hour because then there is some slope. There's a slope to this line after that, which suggests that she's making a certain amount per hour. So let's look here. We're going to look for some nice clear points and I, I have a point down below and if I look along all here, it doesn't look that great until I get right up to the top here. That is definitely a nice clear point that I could use. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at my rise over run, which we've been doing a lot of. We look at our little right angle triangle. Rise over run from 90 to 30. That's a difference of 60. And how many hours is that? From 10 to 15, that's five hours. So if I take $60 divided by five hours, I actually get $12 per hour. So after the first 10 hours, so we could say then Lisa makes $12 per hour. And all of that information is given in the graph. Rise over run, we've been doing that for quite a few lessons. It's a really important skill. It gives us the rate of change of the line when the line has a slope to it. Nadia's line demonstrates direct variation. Nadia's line is the dotted line and it starts right down here at zero. So it wouldn't be too hard for us to figure out how much Nadia is paid for hour per hour. If I look at my triangle there for rise over run, I know from, from zero up to 30, that's a change of 30. And from zero up to five, that's a change of five. So 30 divided by five, is six. So I know that Nadia must make six dollars per hour. So down below we can say that Nadia she just makes six dollars per hour. 
And all of that work, it took a little bit of work to figure that out. Part C, they introduced a third girl, Santa. Santa also offers babysitting in the home. She lives on the edge of town and travels by bus to the home where she babysits. She charges a set fee of $15 a week to cover her bus pass. So she has $15 a week, no matter what. And then however much she works, she charges $4 an hour. So it says, draw the graph and label your line and write an equation. Let's just talk about the equation first. Santa's earnings, if $15 is her flat fee, that's what she gets no matter what. I'm gonna put that at the end. And then $4 an hour, we usually, usually use T for time. This might be an equation for Santa right there. $4 per hour, if it was five hours, you sub it in there. If it's 10 hours, you sub it in for T. So 4T plus 15 would be her equation. If we want to go up and put that on the graph, she starts at $15. So that means Santa's line has an initial value of $15. So it would start here, okay, halfway in between 10 and 20. And then from there, she's going to make $4 an hour. We want to get a nice, accurate line for Santa. So we could pick, I always like to just choose one of these numbers from down here. What if we just pick 10? Let's figure out how much Santa would make in 10 hours. So 10 hours, she makes $4 an hour. 10 hours, that'd be $40. Okay, but then she also makes the $15 flat fee. So that would be $55. So for Santa's line, if I go over to 10 and up to 55, I only need two points, right? I only need to have two points and I can figure out where her line would go. So I chose 10. Somebody else could have figured out 15 or something else, but 10 just seemed like an easy number. So if I'm going to draw her line, starts at 15 and goes something like that. So Santa is sort of, she's sort of in the middle down here. Uh, here would be, this would be Lisa. Here's Santa. Here's Nadia. So Santa's kind of in the middle, but if we go up for lots and lots of hours of babysitting, Santa ends up being the cheapest if somebody needs, you know, 20 hours a week or something like that for babysitting. So on the back of this page, it asks you to try and figure out how much 12 hours would cost from each girl. So each girl charges differently. Remember Lisa. Lisa charges $30. And then after 10 hours, she starts charging $12 an hour. If she's going to work for 12 hours, it makes sense that that's an extra two hours that she hasn't charged for yet. And two hours, that's at $12 an hour. So we would have 30 plus 24, which is 54. So Lisa must charge $54 for babysitting. Nadia, when we looked at her line, she makes $6 an hour. So Nadia, if 12 hours, 6 times 12, that's 72. So Nadia looks, looks like she's going to charge more for 12 hours. And then Santa, we just said Santa's earnings. We wrote an equation here. It looked like 4T plus 15. So she charges $4 an hour for 12 hours and then a flat fee of $15 that we add on. So 4 times 12 is 48 plus 15 is $63. So for 12 hours, you'd probably recommend Lisa to somebody if they needed a babysitter just for 12 hours. The last part of this is several neighbors have inquired about babysitters. Some require a lot of hours of babysitting while others require very few. They have asked you which of the babysitters charges the least. What would be your answer? Okay, these are kind of hidden questions. They really want you to explain yourself in great detail. Uh, they want to know intervals, specific time intervals. When is which person the cheapest? You know, from what range of hours are they the cheapest? So let's just look back at the graph. We need some details here. So what I might say is something like, well, if you need a babysitter for up to five hours, then Nadia is the person you should hire. And then from five hours up till about uh, 13 hours, if you need somebody in that range, then Lisa here is 
the cheapest because her line is the lowest. And then after that, from about 13 hours on, if you're somebody that needs a lot of babysitting, I would recommend Santa because her line is the lowest. Okay, it all depends whose line is the lowest. That is the person that is charging the least at that time.